Food preservation is essential for human life, whether it's today, 300 years ago, or 3,000 years ago. On the channel, we've covered all kinds of food preservation, whether it's salt pork, or ship's biscuits, or even smoked meats. There's one other food preservation technique that we have not talked about, and that is keeping the animals alive as long as possible. Now, I talk about life on board ship all the time in regards to food preservation because it's the perfect testing ground. You're away from shore, you're away from land for seven, eight weeks at a time. And it turns out that keeping animals alive on board ship is one of the very things they did for food preservation. So on board a ship, they would have livestock, whether it was a large man of war or just a normal civilian transport. You're gonna have small animals and large animals alike. So on board almost any ocean vessel, you'll have all kinds of animals, chickens, sheep, goats, pigs, horses, and cattle. Now keeping animals alive on board ship is not easy. You'll have to have all kinds of animal fodder, animal feed. They have to have a special area of the ship all to themselves. So you have almost like a, a barn on board ship. And if it's any large vessel at all with a lot of different sorts of animals, you'll need to have a person specifically in charge of taking care of the animals. So on many ships, they would have a carpenter and you would call him just the ship's carpenter. And they would also have somebody on board that just took care of the animals. So in the British Navy, that man was called Jeremy Ducks or Jemmy Ducks. So why are they keeping these animals alive as long as possible? So some animals like the chickens or maybe the goats, they're good for food immediately all the time. So chickens lay eggs and you don't have to dispatch the chicken so that you've got food. And something like a goat is useful for goat's milk. And having just a simple fresh egg occasionally or a little bit of fresh milk is amazing. Now, most of the people that get to enjoy this fresh food would be captains, officers, even petty officers, or special passengers that would bring their own goods on board ship. And one of the things you would have were your own food resources, and part of that would be the occasional live animal, so that for special occasions, you could have fresh meat. Now, it seems kind of interesting that the passengers would have their own cargo that would come on board, specifically food products. And if an animal came on board ship, they wouldn't have to take care of that animal each and every day. The person who was in charge of the ship's animals would take care of all the animals on board ship, and they would know whose animals those particular ones were. So this one's the captain's sheep, that one's the passenger's chicken. Unfortunately, normal sailors or the low-end passengers probably didn't get to enjoy fresh meat, although I'm sure they wanted to. And we'll talk a little bit about normal ship's provisions here in a second. But what about in situations where you're not on board ship? So you're going out to the frontier, or maybe you're just in a city in colonial America. There were times in the middle of winter when you didn't have other food stocks, and those animals were available for food and they were hard to keep alive all winter long. Keeping these animals alive was difficult, but it was very, very important. So whether you were in the city or in the country, you wanted to be able to have fresh meat during the winter, and you would have that food preserved by keeping those animals alive. Now, it would seem a no-brainer that you would have these animals on a frontier setting, and that you would take them out as soon as possible. And that is true, but that doesn't make it easy. In fact, it was very difficult to transport these animals out to the frontier. Think about having a pig. How do you transport a pig out to the frontier? You know, you gotta have them in like a cage. You can't really drive pigs very easily. Well, a cow you could harness to the back of a wagon or to a pack horse and take out into the frontier. But even then, it's difficult to keep these animals alive unless you already have a very established farm, which Basically, no one did. They were moving out into, say, a forest setting. You had to bring the food along with you to keep these animals alive. And something like cattle, well, you could almost turn them loose. In fact, if you saw fences in a frontier setting, fences were usually to keep the animals out, not to keep them in like we think of today. So you would keep them out of your fields or keep the animals out from around your house until you wanted them to come in. In William Nolan's memoir, where he talks about frontier life in Michigan, 
He says that the mosquitoes are actually a good thing early on, that they drove the cattle in at night. They got so bad that the cattle would come in close to the cabin where there were fires always burning because they were kind of trying to clear fields and they were burning trees and the smoke would keep the mosquitoes down and they would drive the animals in at night just when they needed to protect them. But protecting animals can be very difficult in that frontier setting. In the city, it was easy. The chickens might just roost in the trees around your house and you had lots of dogs and you didn't have to worry about wild animals eating your chickens. But on the frontier, that wasn't true. So you had to work very hard at protecting your chickens because there are all kinds of predators. Again, pigs you would think would be very good on the frontier setting. And if you had no fields, you could just turn them loose into the woods. And basically at the end of the year, when you really needed fresh pork, you could go out and harvest a few of these hogs, but they would turn wild on you and they would be very difficult. So pigs, you really can't keep in with a frontier kind of fence. And so they would destroy any kind of crops that you were trying to grow. And if you had any neighbors nearby, destroy your neighbor's crops and they would be very angry at you. Even in a frontier setting, like the forts in Kentucky during the Revolutionary War, they're on the very, very bleeding edge of the frontier. And they've got these forts that are protecting them from the Native Americans around them. And yet they have a livestock like cows basically running loose around outside the fort. During one of the sieges, where the Native Americans were attacking the fort, the Native Americans shot arrows into the cows and drove them back to the fort, hoping that the people in the fort would open up the doors to allow the cows to come in so that they could get into. You can imagine how important and how wonderful fresh provisions and fresh meat would be on board ship if you think about how bad the ship's provisions could be, especially in the 18th century. Gottlieb Mittelberger has this wonderful pamphlet or little book that he wrote in the 18th century about the travels from Germany to Pennsylvania and back as an indentured servant in 1750 and 1755. He explains the travel on board ship and just how terrible it was. Let me read to you this little section. He says that most of the people get sick is not surprising because in addition to all the other trials and hardships, warm food is served only three times a week. The rations being very poor and very little. Such meals can hardly be eaten on account of being so unclean. Toward the end, we were compelled to eat the ship's biscuits, which had been so spoiled long ago that in the whole biscuit, there was scarcely a piece the size of a dollar that had not been full of red worms and spider's nests. Gottlieb also helps explain how hard it is to keep animals well during the travels. So on his way back from Pennsylvania to Germany, they ran into two storms, two very severe storms, one right after they left and one just before they got to land. He says, this gale and the terrible anxiety lasted from four o'clock in the evening toward three o'clock of the second night when the wind subsided. The ship rocked so violently that it was impossible to cook a meal or to take any comfort. The poultry on board ship was mostly found dead. The pigs and the sheep were sick. The crew of the ship themselves were more dead than alive. Isn't it interesting that almost nobody really today thinks very much about where their meals are coming from, say tomorrow or next week. We have abundant food resources and food preservation all around us. In the 18th century, they had to think about what was happening next week, a month from now, six months from now, to know exactly how to, say, keep your animals alive until March or whatever it takes to survive. I think we can take a page out of this mindset from the 18th century and think a little bit more about what our food is like and where it's coming from.